Hi, this is Rabbi Chaim Kaufman. Welcome to our 289th installment of the Torah portion of the week. We are holding by Parshas Bo, Parshas Bo, all about uh, God hardening uh, Pharaoh's heart. Exactly what that means. You got the eighth plague of the locusts. You get Pharaoh's servants complaining. You get the plague of darkness. You have the warning of the plague of the firstborn. You have the new status uh, of the Jewish people. You have uh, chapter 12, uh, Rosh Chodesh, Paschal Offering, right? All about the Paschal Offering. We'll have to speak about him, but we're going we're gonna to harp at the beginning. The beginning where uh, chapter 10, uh, chapter 10 verse, uh, look at the first couple of verses over here. It says, the Shem said to Moses, come to Pharaoh, for I made his heart, um, I made his heart and the heart of the servant stubborn, so I can put these signs of mine in his midst, and that you can relate, the earth of your son, your son's son, that I made a mockery of Egypt, my signs that are placed among them, you may know that I am a Shem. So God seemingly hardens the heart of Pharaoh and all his servants, so they can know God is God, and that you're going to relate this to your kids. All right? So there's an obvious question. Obvious question commentaries ask, and that is, what's the deal? What's the deal with hardening Pharaoh's heart? Making his heart hard. In other words, took away his free will. Because if you took away his free will, what's the obvious question? Why do you punish him? Why did you get punished? So it says, Moira Rebbe, our other going to Moshe Tzermach Slita should be well. And he brings down in Chochmah Vedat, commentary on Chumash. And he says, to, it's a power to wander over here. He said, if if God hardened his heart, and Pharaoh's not going to listen, what's he going to do for nothing? In other words, he's got no choice. He cannot act the way he wants because God took away his free will. So he says, that we explain according to the Rambam, right? The Rambam and the law of repentance, chapter six, third Allah. What does the Rambam say over there? The Rambam explains why God hardened his heart that Pharaoh was not going to send the Jewish people out because he sinned by himself. He sinned himself in the beginning, he caused evil to the Jewish people. We're living in his land. As it says, let us deal wisely with them. We saw at the beginning, getting the book of Exodus, what are we going to do with them? They're multiplying, you know, like crazy. And if there's a war, they'll fight against us. So what happened? So he enslaved them. He embittered their lives. And he sent himself. So what did God say? God says, I'm going to prevent them from repenting. Until I pay him back. In other words, God takes away his free will because he spit in God's face and basically did what he wanted to do, went beyond what he should have done. And God says, Okay, you're going to do that to me. I'm going to show my sign. I'm going to show the greatest sign. And the Jewish people are going to come out and you're going to let them out. He's going to pay him. He's going to pay him back over here. Because it caused all this difficulty to the Jewish people. So therefore, Merebi says, he hardened his heart, took away his free will. But then he asks, so why, why is Pharaoh going to send the Jewish people out through Moshe? Right? And he says, oh, okay, go. You know, go. You know, repent. No. He's not going to allow Pharaoh to repent over here. Why? Because God already said, you're not going to send them. You may want to send them. You may have the greatest desire to send them. But you're not going to send them. Because you're going to know who I am, God said. They're going to play with you like a rag doll. You're going to have all kinds of fun because you went beyond what I wanted you to do. Right? You went beyond what you should have done. Right? In order to show the entire world that God is preventing him from repentance because he sinned at the outset 
and he can't repent. Therefore, he's going to die in his evilness, etc. Right? So God takes away his free will. Those are the words of the Rambam. And he gives other examples. He gives other examples as well. Then my Rebbe says, okay, so the words of the Rambam, what do I understand? That God hardened his heart and took away his, <clears throat> took away his free will. By doing so, he sanctified his name. He did a Kiddush Hashem, sanctified his name. Because everybody sees God's power. Because with all the plagues that he put on Egypt, and I would destroy Egypt, what did it do? What did it do to Pharaoh and his servants? He hardened them. He made, he made them stubborn. By making them stubborn, God whacked them even more. Hit them harder. In order to show God's power. Right? But essentially, it doesn't make any sense. Because, you know, if you see all these terrible things happen, one after another, you know, animals are decimated, you got the river turns to blood, you got lice, boils, all these things, frogs, one disaster after another. So you would think people are fed up. You know, maybe they're just taking Pharaoh out of power. Knocked him off. Military coup. Why didn't it happen? Could be there were rumblings at the beginning. All these terrible things. Why didn't it happen? You know why it didn't happen? Because God took away their free will. He just kept, he whacked them into submission. Right? That's what he did. Right? That's what he did over him. It logically, doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. So, if you look at the Rambam, maybe here says, could be a person sinned a great sin, or many sins, until God judges and sees, he's got to pay him back. Right? Enough's enough. He's going to pay. Probably going to just do what he wants. It's not a, it's not a Hefker Welt. It's not an ownerless world. God's going to take over at some point. What does God do? Or what can God do? He can make the person do terrible things. Not help them repent. You know, keep them in their evilness till they die. So that's why the Torah says, I'm going to harden his heart. Because he sinned by himself. He caused Terrible things happen to Jewish people. And he doesn't allow him to repent. Because he wants to pay him back for all the terrible things he did. And God tells Moshe, don't worry, he's not going to let you go. Not yet. He's playing with him, essentially. And he made a mockery of him. Because of all these things, all these different plagues, that's the power, that's the wonder over here. With all these different plagues getting whacked, blood, vermin, right? animals die, frogs, boils, lice. I mean, come on, a lot of things. You would think after a while they got the message. Just let them go already. But no. Pharaoh is stubborn, so stubborn, absolutely refuses to let them go. So the Rambam over there, laws of repentance, chapter six, halacha four, right? The next halacha, he asks like this. He says, just like this, the prophet asks, the righteous in their prayers. That Hashem should help them go on the right path. Just like David and Melech, King David said, Hashem show me your ways. He says, I'll prevent, you know, don't prevent me 
you know, my sins from going to the right path. In other words, in other words, even if I sin, God forbid, still help me, help me go on the right path. And do not cause my sins to make me not want to repent. In other words, don't harden my heart because of my sins. But give me the ability to choose. Do the right thing, do the wrong thing. Do not take that away. That's what King David says. So I can know your true path. Now, this is unbelievable. Says David Amalek, says King David, what's he worried about? God's going to cut off the doors of repentance. He's going to take it away. Prevent him. Right? He won't be able to repent. Remember, if he says, what are we going to say? That's what King David says. What are we going to say? So we have to explain to our progeny after us the ways of Hashem away and go in the right direction. Because it could be we're going to get stuck. We're going to do things we shouldn't do. And what's God going to do? Knock us out. Not kill us, but not allow us to repent. So he says, what does this mean? God's playing with them. Right, he's playing with him, meaning that he sins and he can't stop. He can't stop. This is a scary thing. So I've seen my Rebbe explain a number of times. You know, in such a case, what do I have? What do I potentially have? That a person can sin, can do the wrong thing, or continue to do the wrong thing, God says, okay. Now I'm going to play with you. I'm going to let you go into this path and that's it. You won't be able to repent. You go down a negative path and you'll stay there. They say you'll stay there until you die. That's a scary proposition. That means if God takes it away, you can never repent. It's like you don't have free will. It's like you're a puppet. It's exactly what he did to Pharaoh. Played with him. Play with him like a rag doll. Decimated his whole country. Pharaoh says, I'm not going to let you go. <laughs> Crazy. That's the first couple of plagues. Should have let him go. Why would we need this aggravation? Now, our whole country getting decimated. Could have been an uprising. No. They're all stubborn. All the servants are all stubborn. So much destruction. That's the question. <laughs> so many things going on. That they don't get the message. If you tell me they were mentally challenged, I get it. They don't ever get the message. Okay? But he wasn't a fool. Right? He spoke with his cabinet, so to speak, what to do with the Jews. Made a big mistake. Big mistake. Since he sinned himself, God's okay. I'm going to knock him out. I gave him an opportunity. He didn't take it. God says, okay, now I'm going to play with it. Now I'm going to show the whole world my power. <laughs> right? You know, it's kind of like a person just hitting himself in the face over and over and over and over again. They can't stop. Why can't they stop? They can't. It's just like their free will taken away. Right? This is what God does. He just pounds, pounds, pounds. And they keep taking it and taking it. Right? Should have been an uprising. They should have got rid of Pharaoh. They should have killed him, poisoned him, killed him, whatever. They're all stubborn. Why were they all stubborn? Because God's pulling the strings here. God wanted the greatest nation in the world at this point in time to get totally decimated. Right? Totally decimated over here. But I would have thought according to logic, according to logic, what would logic tell me? They'll stop. They'll let him go. Why didn't they let them go? Because God did not want them to let them go. God wanted to punish them more. Meaning, Pharaoh. And God says to Moses, he's not going to let you go. He says, eventually he will. By the last plague, he says, he's going to let you go. But not till I decimate it. Not till I destroy the whole place, showing my greatness. It says, King David, even if I sin, the worst thing that can happen is you take away my free will. 
Do not take away my free will, my ability to repent. For every sense, King David said that. What are we going to say? We mentioned before. The Rebbe says we all have, we all have to be careful. How do we know we're doing certain things and we just can't stop? Who knows if our free will been taken away? Could be. Scary proposition. Very scary proposition. So so the Rebbe says you want all those doors open, the doors to repentance. You never want them shut. Because if they're shut, what's God going to do? He's going to make a mockery of us. He's going to make us do things we don't want to do. And we know they're bad. How do people spiral out of control? Drugs, other addictions. They're out of control. They're not in control of themselves. Can they get help? They can get help. They can get help. But if God doesn't allow them to, it'll destroy them. Destroy them. So we ourselves have to be very careful, extremely careful. That even if we sin, God does not close the opportunity for repentance. Because if he does, there's no way out of it. There's no way out of it. No matter how much you pray, no matter what you do, God seals it, he seals it. You know, it's God forbid, let's say, someone gets a bad diagnosis and they're terminal. It's only a matter of time. No one wants to get such a diagnosis. But let's say the doctor's got it right. So if the doctors get it right, terminal's terminal. Can't change it. Can change your attitude. I can deal with it, maybe. But you can't change it. There's no possible way to get out of it. Let's say. In this case, same thing. Pharaoh, no matter what you do, you're not letting the Jewish people go. But look what's around them. All these, all these plagues. One after another, after another. Boom. Whole country decimated. No, we're not going to let them go. No, we're not going to let them go. But your whole country is getting destroyed. Doesn't matter. then be brought out may rot wherever he is. He was killing his own people because of one goal. That one goal was to kill every single Jew. At the expense of his own people, cattle cars, he needed weapons in the front. He didn't know, not giving them. Our goal is to extermin exterminate every single Jew. God forbid. Right? And we're not going, you know, I don't care if my own men die. There's also a screw loose there. Because at the end of the day, they're causing a lose. We could have at least a standing chance. More weapons, you know, more supplies, different things. No, we have to kill the Jews. But I'm also turning the screws. Right at the beginning of the end. You don't have supplies. You don't have, you know, you know, you can't get weapons to the front. This, you know, whatever it is. You lose. You lose over time. So the point over here is God's telling you a message. He's giving you a message. And the message is if God can harden Pharaoh's hearts because he was guilty of what he did, he can harden anybody's heart. How do we know our heart hasn't been hardened? We're stuck in the same thing over and over and over again. Maybe that's the case and we can't repent. God forbid. We never ever want those gates closed. The, the gate of repentance should always be open. We should always have that chance. Because if not, if God turns, if God locks the door, that's it. Right? If he did, if he, if, there's no turning back. No turning back over here. So over here, God wanted to make a point. And his point was, Pharaoh didn't listen. So God took his, his free will away. To punish him, show his greatness. But it's just ironic. Plague after plague, pounding after pounding, destruction after destruction. He still keeps coming. Like an idiot. Still keeps coming. Oh, can I have some more punishment? Sure. Wham, wham, wham. 
That's the message. Message is without that doesn't make sense. You know why? You know why in the world? Why in the world are you gonna take that abuse? We're never gonna let him go. Okay, we'll pound you again. No, we're not gonna let him go. Pound him again. Put him into the ground. What's the only explanation? God took away his free will. And once the free will is taken away, you know, you don't get it back. Doesn't sound like you get it back over here. Right, according to the Rambam. But God made a point. He made a point, show the world he's in charge. So we have to be careful for ourselves. We should also pray on a daily basis. God should not take the, that, that away. The gates of repentance should always be open. Otherwise, you know, otherwise we're in trouble. We're in serious trouble. Because if not, then there's no hope. You know, so we, we need that hope. We need that ability to repent. Because if it's closed, it's over. I want to remind everyone I have a class on Tuesday's Heart every Tuesday, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, two Q&As every Tuesday, Thursday, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 o'clock Israel Time. Ethics of Our Fathers, Perkei Avos every Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern Time, 9 o'clock Israel Time. Tanakh Talk, Controversial Issues. Every Thursday, eight o'clock, um, eight o'clock Eastern time. Or let's say better. That was the old time. It's um, two o'clock Eastern time, ten o'clock Israel time, or ten. Sorry, three o'clock uh, Eastern time, ten o'clock Israel time. And Sunday, Book of Leviticus chapter sixteen. That's uh, Sunday, nine o'clock Eastern time, four o'clock Israel time. No, I nations. Uh, Sunday, uh, two thirty Eastern time, nine thirty uh, Israel time. I have conversion classes. Anyone interested in any of this, find me on Facebook at Michael Chaim Kaufman or Beyond Orthodox Conversion Judaism. You can look at my blog, orthodoxconversion.com or my YouTube channel, beyondorthodoxconversion.com. Uh, I have all my Q&As there. I have my, my uh, Torah portion of the week, Book of Leviticus, uh, all controversial issues. Right, You can take a look over there. Other, um, or you can send me an email, rabbichaimkaufman at gmail.com, I-B-B-I-C-H-A-I-M-C-O-F-F-M-A-N at gmail.com.